Hey there. Um, so I've been in Titus this morning. Uh, this is the qualifications for a pastor or elder. Um, but uh, I think it applies to what we've been talking about, especially since the conversation on my wall. I've just some of the comments I've seen of the last couple of videos are just like, wow. Um, he's talking about, you know, they have to be a certain kind of character in order to be a elder, right? Um, and here we go. H holding fast the faithful word as he's been taught that he may be able to by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the ga gainsayers. So there's these gainsayers. You need to have a certain kind of character. This is for your witness, not works for so that you can be saved, but to have a witness and credibility so that you can bring people up in sound doctrine to grow them in Christ. If you're all over the map and your character's out of control and you have a temperament that's wild and you can't, you speculate anything and say anything, then you have no ground to talk to anyone about Christ, uh, especially when it comes to matters of growth. And I've learned that over the years. I mean, I have had to be, and I still am growing, but, you know, I, yeah, there's just a certain maturity before anybody's going to listen to you. You know, they don't hear the voice of a stranger. And that's not to say any believer is a stranger, but we start out pretty wild and we start out with a lot of mixture. Like I was saying to somebody, you know, when I got saved, I got every thrown at, everything thrown at me, you know, UFOs, principalities and powers, mystery school, religion, the Illuminati, and Jesus is the only thing that can save you from it. You need to call on Jesus to be saved because this kingdom's going to be judged and his kingdom's coming in. So it was all dumped on me. I didn't, I did believe that Jesus died for my sins and that was the only way I could stand before God. But I wasn't clear that that was the message that was sound doctrine. I didn't, I wasn't clear that the gospel was the center. And we were never taught assurance of salvation or any of those kind of things in the churches. And everybody outside of the churches was just talking about wild, crazy stuff. And so you would just talk about it all, you know, and hope some of it sticks. <laughs> and uh, more and more as I've grown, Christ has become the point of reference. More and more. Thank you, Jesus, you know, that he is really clar clarified that he's the center, and the message concerning him is what saves. The message concerning Jesus Christ is what saves, and that's the sound doctrine and the faithful word that you've been taught, right? That so, And you have a certain kind of character and a certain kind of speech so that you can, by sound doctrine, exhort and convince gainsayers. So who's going to listen to you if you can't be? Stay on track. How are you going to convince anyone if you can't follow an argument and stay on track with the truth, right? But then in contrast, there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they have the, un, uh, the circumcision, right? Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not, and they're doing it for money's sake. And he says, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true, therefore rebuke them sharply so that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto him that unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Even in their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but by works deny him being you know abominable, disobedient, and uh under every good work, a reprobate. Now, I used to apply that to myself and be scared. Oh, I'm under every work, a reprobate. People would say, people would try to help me, but I could issue the condemnation faster than they could issue the gospel, you know. No, I'm a reprobate under every good work. They're like, who talks like that? <laughs> but anyway, uh, in context now, what I see is that there's these people that are just vain talkers and 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 they their mouths have to be stopped they're subverting things and teaching things that they should not 
First of all, they make great generalizations. This guy, one of themselves, a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. That is a dramatic generalization applied to a whole group of people, right? And he says, look, there's some truth in it. So therefore rebuke those Cretans uh, so that they can be sound in the faith. The idea is not give up on them. See, the prophet of their own, these vain talkers, probably wrote off the whole group of people and said, these people can't even be saved. Look at them. You know, they're all this. Anytime you make a generalization, um, that's a problem. And then he says, uh, not giving heed. So they need to be sound in the faith in contrast to what? Giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments from men. The term from the truth. The Jewish fables. What would that be? Well, that would be angel stories, most likely, and supernatural stories, uh, apocryphal lore about the Nephilim and their descendants, and then different miracles. And see, we have the similar thing today with the Nephilim and the Illuminati, MKUltra. All this stuff has a kernel of truth. It's, it's all got its roots in truth. That stuff is true. But giving heed to it is another thing, and being defiled by it is another thing. And, um, you know, the problem is, is then you make the generalizations. Well, they're all involved in witchcraft and Illuminati. They're all wrapped up in cannibalism and transvestitism and all this stuff. What does that do to you? It defiles. Number one, it, this stuff is a backdoor for legalism. You get involved with those Nephilim groups, and before you know it, you're in Torah observance, feast observance, uh, all kinds of different things. Because you don't have to be saved to peddle that kind of stuff. And yeah, they have spun it up into a genre to make money with. There's one guy, I'm not going to say his name, who's one of the big Nephilim guys, and he's got pewter statues in his studio of... Uh, I guess what would be a giant um, and he's holding up a armored soldier who's half his size and he's he's just ramming, a, impaling the guy with a sword. And, you know, somebody probably made that for him because they think it's cool and he's really into that stuff and he may not realize it, but why not just have a picture, why not just have action figures of Jezebel killing all the prophets of uh, of the Lord? Like, you know, why not have a, uh, a a clay action figure of Simon Magus starting the Gnostic schools? Of, you know, that it just it's like, yeah, you are you, you're off on a tangent. You know, you think that stuff is cool. That's, some of those guys want to be in the tribulation just so they could see the abyss open and Abaddon come out. They'd rather see that than stand before the Lord. They're so caught up in that stuff. And yeah, it's a backdoor for all kinds of legalistic teachings and they come against grace eventually and you realize, wow, they're not even saved, you know? So, um, but then they generalize everything. This is the tendency, is that these people generalize. All the Christians are liars. They're all evil beasts and slow bellies, you know? And that is a real problem because what it does is it darkens your imagination and keeps you from being able to recognize the move of God when it's happening. And I wrote that thing um, about Kanye on my wall, and I don't know how many of you see it, but one example I used was, see, because people are coming at me saying, no, you don't get it. Kanye is part of the Illuminati, and his, why, his whole family's transvestites, and they're tied into the Nephilim, and, you know, you can, you're, you're deceived, you know. They're building the Antichrist system. Okay, so you're, what they're doing, they're, they're generalizing uh, based on fables that have a kernel of truth but have a lot of exaggeration in it. A lot of exaggeration. And the more you study that stuff, you find it's endless. It's, that you, you never get to the bottom of it until you get to the bottomless pit itself and then you're in the abyss, you know. And that stuff darkens your understanding. It, um, it defiles you. It's, it, it actually defiles you, okay. Getting immersed in all that stuff. It's not sound doctrine. The only thing that is light and truth is the faith. The sound doctrine that is our food with which we're to nourish our, each other. And this stuff has to be stopped because 
It's damaging people and making them impure. See, the Jewish fables and commandments of men, it says, turn from the truth. On the one hand, the men that can't, the men turn from the truth. But these stories and stuff also turn from the truth. And you can see it because people take their stand on that against the gospel. They may not even realize they're doing it. But when I say, yeah, I watched two hours uh, an interview with Kanye and this guy from Apple where he's talking about his faith and being born again. You can Google it. Uh, I don't have the link, but it's like Kanye West to uh, interview born again saved. You'll find it. And he clearly is different now. And he admits that he is like Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, he thought he was God. He thought he was so puffed up in his pride. He talks about it. And he was a slave to sex addiction and pornography and all kinds of crazy stuff. And he was going to Coachella parties and being involved with all the crazy stuff. But God sent him out like a beast. I mean, you remember a couple of years ago when he just went crazy. Well, that's what God did to Nebuchadnezzar. And that broke Kanye. And uh, he is a new believer, really understanding his salvation as of April. So there's a mix of ideas. You know, a new believer has a whole mix of stuff going on, but they also have the incorruptible seed of the Word of God living and abiding in them. And when they talk about Jesus, they're noticeably different. He believes, and I've heard him say it in his songs, I've heard him say it in his concerts, and I've heard him say it, in, I think in that, even in that interview, he believes that he could not stand before a holy God except by the blood of Jesus. And that's what makes him a Christian. That's what he believes. That's what he professes. That's the gospel. And... That's not the same thing as the Pope or Obama giving lip service to Jesus. No, this is someone standing in his redemption and he's surrounded himself. You know, he's got a mix of people. And that's why a lot of people are having uh, an urge who never even liked Kanye before. I've never met Kanye West, but they have an urge to pray for him because God is raising up like a spear to throw at the system. And he's surrounded himself with this team of worshiping Holy Spirit filled people that those it's church services he's doing he's surrounded by all these spirit filled people and they are all praying and fasting and doing you know spiritual warfare and you know I know about the NAR and I know about charismatic but I also know the real thing there is a real thing that that stuff is a counterfeit of and he yes he's still immersed in that culture and think about it if you, I said this in my wall, so I'm kind of wandering a little bit, but if you were a Jew in Babylon during Daniel's day and you learned that Daniel had been exalted over the mystery schools and was in charge of the astrologers and wise men as the advisor of the king and that he, had, he wasn't wearing priestly garments of a Levite, which he wasn't anyway, but was wearing the garment of of the mystery schools that signified his rank in that. And it was full of, you know, it was full of a lot of Illuminati symbols. I guarantee his outfit that he had to wear had all kinds of symbols all on it that you'd say, oh, well, he's clearly Illuminati. And I wonder if people would reject his prophetic word because of that. Well, he's clearly, you know, he's in the system. He's the Antichrist himself, you know. Or Nehemiah, I use that example, would you say he's a shill because he had favor with Xerxes and, uh, and was actually able to be allowed to go rebuild the temple? No, you'd say, oh, that's just Illuminati. You know, he can't have all that favor. Those are the kind of arguments I see on my wall. He can't, Kanye cannot be legitimate because he's exalted in that system and therefore that system being controlled by Satan, God can't do anything in it. And see, that is unbelief. That's just straight out, to the pure, all things are pure, but to him who is defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. You See, discernment is not for you to be able to see the devil under every tree and, and demons behind every bush. Discernment is so that you can see the work of the Spirit and testify and seal it when you see it and cooperate with God's move. And, uh, you know, what I see is people are just completely impure in their imaginations. It's like their imaginations are darkened to the point where they literally 
are cynical that God could even move in that realm. And the irony is that they say that, you know, Satan's the God of this world and he's in charge of all the perceptions and all of the symbols and everything. But yet they trust the information they're getting from that system about the cannibalism and the transvestites and all that stuff. See, you can't have it both ways. And the Bible doesn't really point us to look into all that stuff. The only way to get that kind of information is to go to the fable makers, the people who are turning away from the truth. I, most, most of the people that I was following, all of the people that I was following that were into the Nephilim and all the different stuff going on behind the scenes and everything, turned out to have not, didn't have the gospel right. Well, is there any truth in them? I'm not saying that there's not some truth. I've studied that stuff for years and years. I've even written a couple books about that stuff. But God convicted me that that was not food and it was darkening me and making me very cynical and paranoid and suspicious that I need to have my eyes on sound doctrine, on the gospel and on Jesus Christ and to be filled with the spirit and and realize that we still live in the time that the church is on the earth. We still have lampstands and we still have the restrainer. So yes, that stuff is kind of lurking, but actually it's, there's a small percentage of people that are actually involved in that dark, deep stuff. The, but they've created a culture that you can't get ahead in certain systems and lust you flash their emblems and signs and all that stuff. Some of them know what they're doing and some of them don't. I believe Kanye does because he was friends with Jay-Z, who's definitely Illuminati and all that, you know. But Kanye's coming out of that stuff. He knows what that stuff is. He, You know, his songs are like, Jezebel is not going to get a hold of me. He knows what Jezebel is. He knows what Babylon is. He knows who Nebuchadnezzar is. He knows those types. He knows that spirit. And he knows what he's up against. And that's why he surrounded himself with an army of like 200 people praising him, every, praising, I'm sorry, praising the Lord everywhere they go. They sing to the Lord. And uh, it's different, man. It's, and he, he renounces Jesus and all that stuff and talks quite openly about how God brought him down. And now he's being used as the one of the foolish things to shake up things. And yeah, God's given him a platform. And just because he has some of those symbols and stuff going on in that system, which he doesn't really, I mean, yeah. A lot of the things that people are talking about are five and six years old. He really was in that stuff, but he's not. See, you have to be able to recognize that the Lord can save someone and then give him a platform. He can use a Nehemiah even though he's in Xerxes' court. You know, I bet that court was full of debauchery and just absolutely disgusting. You know, the legends around Xerxes was he considered himself to be a god, you know. Same with Nebuchadnezzar, and yet God saved him. But the point being is, uh, do you have actual discernment? Actual discernment is not seeing the devil under tree, every tree, but recognizing when God is moving. And that's why Paul says in Philippians, he prays that your love may abound, and yet more and more in all wisdom and spiritual discernment or understanding that you may approve, which is a positive word, by testing the things which differ and are more excellent so that you may be sincere and without offense unto the day of Christ. When the Lord comes, it's important for some reason for us to be without offense. And what this fable stuff does is it makes you offended at everybody. You generalize everything. You throw them all in one big bucket and say, see, they're all doing that. And there's no, I'm, and then you're suspicious of, you say, I know that can't be real. I'm suspicious because that's the Antichrist system and they wouldn't give him favor unless he was one of them. Well, that, you know, all Cretans are liars. They're all lazy. They're all, you know, that is a generalization based on, on fables that you can't personally verify. You know, some people tell me that they were involved in MK Ultra, and they may have been through traumatic experiences, but it's not the necessarily the same thing as being involved with the CIA sponsored satanic, you know, cults. <laughs> it's not the same thing, but it could be. You know, some some people may very well be. But still, you've got to get to a point where you're letting the Lord cleanse you 
of those memories and experiences so that you can recognize the positive things. When Paul talks about discernment, especially in Philippians, it's all about having the capacity to recognize when God's moving. You know, he's like, well, all these people are preaching the gospel out of contention, thinking to add affliction to my bonds, but I rejoice that Christ is preached. That's not me. That's not how I would react, but that is a secret to staying in the light and keeping your heart free of offense before the Lord so that your eyes are not blinded to his move. Um, the, the opposite of that is having your understanding darkened and being defiled and unbelieving and having nothing pure. And even your mind and your conscience is defiled and your imaginations are defiled. And I see people on my wall talking about Kanye and they're saying the mo- some of the most just things you wouldn't say in front of children, talking about him, using cuss words and everything, but insisting that he's not saved. And it's like, I don't know where they stand on the gospel. That's the thing is it's like you are, the, this is a test for some people to see where they really stand on the gospel. Do they agree that someone, the fruit of the lips justifies and someone who testifies correctly about the gospel in their own life is saved. And if they haven't heard Kanye, then they, you know, talk about his faith, then they should look into it or keep silent because they don't know. Um, Okay, well, I guess that's all I'm going to say. I hope I'm done talking about Kanye. It's really not, that's not what I'm concerned about. I'm not concerned about Kanye. I'm concerned about people's hearts that are clearly um, full of offense yet they think it's discernment and it's not it's something else all right talk to you later